Here we go. Yeah, the corn rows are curving, so it's time to cut through here and make my way into the house. And there it is in the silhouette of the sunrise. That top window was my bedroom window for five or six years. <sighs> Windows smashed out, ripped out. Siding is torn off. What a mess. So briefly, with regard to the current status of the house, I don't really know for sure what's going on here. Um, but a year ago, the windows were still intact. The door was still intact. It looked like it was being lived in. Uh, clearly, from what I see, and based on my experience with abandoned places, I don't think this place has been lived in for years. Um, the damage is just overwhelming. It's surreal to see it like this after living here for all those years. I'd heard rumors, nothing substantiated, but years ago there was a meth operation happening in the shed and it was shut down, of course. And what I do know for sure is there were people renting the place from Nova Scotia at one point, a young couple. And the place had people living in it for different periods of time. Um, I'd heard that there were maybe migrants living here, uh, hired hands to do work around here. I have no idea if that's true or not. There were obviously people living here, young children were here. So there was a family of some kind. So based on the vandalism of the smashed windows and everything just destroyed in here, I'm going to definitely make an assumption that what we're seeing is vandalism and at some point uh, the place was just trashed. It's just surreal to see it like this. I'm going to say that so many times in this video. Okay, let's get back to exploring. Everything here has been moved or rearranged in some sense. I'm sure that fridge wasn't originally there. Um, the way we have it set up is there was actually a countertop here in something like a C shape that was built by my dad shortly after they were married. I have this stove oven here, some countertops. You can see the height of it from where the paint ends there. And I went across to here. Our phone was here, an old rotary dial phone, fridge, and then there was a closet here. Um, it looks like it's obviously all been ripped out. Um, actually, what I do remember is shortly after my dad died and we had to sell the place, uh, they had actually replaced it with what I remember being like oak cabinets of some kind. And you can see some of the attachments there along the wall. The kitchen table is right here. We'd have family gatherings, our regular family dinners. Um, laundry was back in there. Let's try to have a look at the bathroom. Well, the original door is still there. Yeah. Bags and bags of garbage. Children's toys everywhere. And the door. It opened. Wow. 
So this was redone. Oh, uh, it's definitely a bathroom for animals. Shortly before my dad died, we had started actually renovating this bathroom and this is the shower that we bought right here and the toilet that we bought. So they used those and renovated it. And wow, there's a dog bowl there. I wonder if this belongs to dogs. It almost looks like it could be. It smells of dog too. Wow, that's, that is something else. Those are the original lights that we bought. Oh, there's even a towel still hanging here. Yeah, the window was removed, maybe not by force. It's too difficult to tell. Okay, well, enough of that. Just loads and loads of junk. Some paint back in there, it's difficult to see. I don't have my lights on right now. I don't think it's too important. Windows taken out again. Even the interior window was taken out. Wow. I think before we really get started with the tour of the place, I'm gonna provide some context. I grew up here and lived here for the first years of my life. My father passed away. And a few years before that, my mother had passed away, cancer and a stroke between the two of them. So uh, I miss them every day, of course. I think about them all the time. What happened after that, without digging into too many of the details, my brother and I couldn't really keep the place, so we sold it. The new owners started giving the place a new life. The first thing that happened is they demolished the barn, first by knocking it down and then burning it. I'm not really sure of the legality of all that, but that's what happened. And much to my surprise, they kept the house and started renting it out to people. A couple of years later, I happened to be driving by the place and I stopped to take some photos. Car. Holy shit, it's stopping. Just pull it in. They went straight to the buildings. It was a pickup truck. Could be a worker, could be an owner, but I'm not surprised. I expected someone to show up. The other buildings are active with animals and some kind of a pig operation, hog operation. So I'm gonna have to be stealthy and quiet. Let's start the tour here. This was my parents' bedroom. Obviously it's been used for other purposes, for other people. Looks like it was a kid's bedroom at one time. This is the original door that my dad put in many, many, many years ago and the trim. But it's been repainted. And they had a bed here in the middle against the wall there and some furniture here, like a nightstand kind of thing. <clears throat> the windows here were taken out, obviously. There are some new windows put in, but, but now it's wide open to the elements. Talk about a beautiful view. Although when we were here, there were a whole row of trees here, so you couldn't see past out into the field. It's quite nice like this now. Trees changing color out there. So, yeah, what we have here is a um, whole different paint from what I remember. And the shag carpet is gone. The owners had replaced the carpet we had that was shag with this Berber, which is much more neutral friendly. This here was my brother's bedroom. Again, original doors, 
original ceiling still has that speckled kind of thing in the circle there in the center but it had been repainted from the blue to this kind of two-tone pink and off-white it's like they didn't quite finish what they were starting here the original closet door with the original doorknob this kind of thing here gold finish whoa <laughs> flies flying out of there nice thought it was bees for a second we had an iron railing in here but they replaced it with this this wood railing obviously much more stable and secure I guess yeah it really looks like the people were just sort of thrown out there's just furniture and garbage and clothes and everything everywhere. This was my bedroom when I was zero until 14 years old, I think. When my brother went off to school, I took over a different room. I'll show that next. It seems very small. But I guess when you're small, it seems big. Ah. So yeah, original door painted white. And that wasn't there. My walls were originally yellow. Oh, I hear lots of voices now. Is that out here or is that? No, that's the main highway out there. Oh, maybe not. Oh, something's going on. I need a better view of this. Oh, shit. Big truck coming in. I'm going to quickly sneak out. See if I can see what's going on. Ham Haven Acres. That's what was on the truck that went by. Probably wasn't visible because of the contrast in the video. We'll get back to the tour here. This really feels like an infiltration now. We'll get back to the tour. <clears throat> Guest book. Pick page and leave some love. Well, that's neat. Oh, some homework. January. <laughs> wow. Baby schedule. Daytime feeding, pee and poo. That's very, yeah, very handwritten. There's a pickup truck going out there. My birthday is in January and we had some brutal winters out here in terms of volume of snow. One time my friend was over for my birthday, staying overnight. We got snowed in for I think three days or something like that, which was awesome. No school and we got to have a lot of fun. I remember it being a really good birthday, but I used to have two single beds in here one on either side of the wall. So there was a gap. And what we were, got doing was we would play this game of pushing each other off the bed and whoever didn't fall onto the floor was the winner, something like that, or wasn't the loser. Kids, you know? So at one point my brother pushed my friend and he fell backwards into the wall and put his head through the wall. That's where this mark comes from here. So my dad fixed that by replastering it and inserting some drywall or what have you. Surprisingly, I don't remember him being mad either, which is good. My dad was very forgiving. So uh, one more story here, I guess. This <laughs> surprisingly is still here. It wasn't fixed and they didn't replace the door. 
Uh, this is from my brother punching the door because we were fighting. You know, we were teenagers or whatever. And he was trying to push my door open and I managed to close it and it closed on his hand or so he said. I don't really believe that to be true to this day. But in anger, he punched the door and left this mark. <sighs> ah, kids. We were something else. So there you go, this was my childhood bedroom. So yeah, let me see if I remember right. So I had white shag carpet, my brother had blue shag carpet, my parents had red shag carpet, and the hallway I think was like a yellow orange shag. I'll dig up some photos. It's pretty crazy to, to think about it. I think it blinded my eyes. And this used to have like a green Berber. This was the first room in the house that had been renovated uh, from its original 19... 1896 state, I believe, was when it was built. So it survived 120 years or what have you. Um, yeah. This was, I guess, a recreation room for my brother and I when we were kids. But eventually it turned into his bedroom for a couple of years. He went to college and then it became my bedroom. So it's literally almost as big as an apartment I had once. That's crazy to think about now. The paneling is still original. This is from 1960s, I think, something like that. And same with the ceiling. Everything is original in here, including the light fixtures. The light fixture that only has a single bulb in it, which is a lot of the times the way I had it. I used to have guitars and amps all around here and a pull-out couch. I didn't have a real bed. I was stubborn about not having a real bed for some reason. I had a, a tape player that was kind of old and these scratches are actually for me leaning it up on top of the top of this, the pull-out couch, the sofa part, um, and playing music while I was sleeping. And I used to like to rearrange my room. So the same marks are over here. And surprisingly, no one ever complained about it. Maybe because they never really saw them. I used to watch sunsets out this window all of the time. Like, Really, every night when there was a good sunset, I would watch it. It was amazing. This could almost be a Pink Floyd album cover. Nice view of the fields. Got a bed frame there. Yeah, just like every manner of clothing you could imagine. Some blow-up mattresses by the looks of it. Perhaps even a waterbed. No. And paneling was ripped off. So I've always wanted to see the backside of this stuff. Yep, just like really cheap board. Probably all my parents could afford at the time. Oh, and another window from a shed. Wow. I wonder what all this stuff is doing up here. So, whoops, don't step on the nails. That's why I wear the good boots. the first nail I stepped on in years. Wow, figures it had to be in my own place. So what you can see behind the wall here is like a styrofoam padding and then the original slats with the plaster. That's original house right there, 1896. What my dad told me is they used like a blow-in insulation up in here that really wasn't very effective so what happened is this room being on the west side of the house was insanely cold I used to play guitar with frosty hands well, it's crazy to think just how low these ceilings are when I live in a place with like 12 foot ceilings now or 10 or 11 or something like that yeah I never really thought of this place being small, but it was built by people who were about five feet tall, typically five to five and a half feet tall. Yeah. This really is just a trip down memory lane, so please forgive my indulgence. This is a very rare, one of a kind type of explore. <sighs> this door always fell off of its hinges, at least in its later years. So I'm not surprised it's like that now. Someone probably just reefed it off. Yeah, both of them. 
just crazy to think my dad built all of this. These doors are original. This bathroom was remodeled by my dad and a friend of his. This floor is new. The bathtub is new. But one of my, this is deteriorating quite quickly too. This kind of white trim with the wood painted. Um, this was replaced by my, by my mom, I think. I don't know, I remember something like that. Toilet's been removed. This window was brand new, put in by my dad. It used to be a full length window, but he wanted to make some privacy for the toilet. So he re-bricked it and added in this window. One of my earliest memories is actually the guy working on this bathroom and he was sitting here and I brought ice cream up to him. I was maybe three or something like that. So I think that covers all the rooms upstairs here. All right, well, this is the first time I'm using this thing for real. So whoever's gonna see this, please bear in mind that <laughs> I'm new to this. We're starting in my, what was my bedroom. Okay, I uh, just wanted to take a shot from this end. Get as many views as possible of my, my old room. God knows how long it'll be here. God, I suck at this. <laughs> One day I'll be good. I can remember bringing ice cream up to uh, Mel Irving, who was working on the, on the upstairs at the time. He was doing a lot of the carpentry work and whatnot. That's my only memory of it being worked on. Okay, uh, we're in my old bedroom uh, when I was a really young kid. Over here, there was a single bed, and over here there was another one, and I had a lamp kind of right there with a stand and whatever, and my dresser was right here. There's a spot in the wall right here. Uh, I had a birthday in... Uh, well, my birthday is January 18th, and I had a friend, John Seyu, over. And him and my brother and me were doing this stupid game. We were like 12 or 11 or something. We were doing this stupid game uh, where we would try to jump from bed to bed when they were on either side and see if, um, you know, whoever lost was the person who got knocked off the bed when they were trying to jump across. Real intelligent, I know. But anyways... Uh, Jim went to jump across and he freaked out John who was right in front of that spot on the wall there and John fell backward and put his head through the wall. Uh, I was kind of freaked out at the time but you know he was okay so that's good. He missed a beam. There's a beam somewhere around here right right beside. If he would have knocked that he probably would have got a concussion or something. I have to call him Eric Lindros. It's actually it is a pretty nice looking bathroom compared to some of the other stuff in the house it hasn't gotten too dated. Well, maybe the floor tile, I don't know. It's alright though. But yeah. Quick scan. And that's so fast movement though. Um, yeah, Jim's bed was right here. He actually had a double and it came out, you know, as far as they would. He had a stand here, uh, some sort of stand-up closet dresser drawer thing, I forget what they're called. And a desk was here that had a world map on the top of it. It was kind of cool, but so be it. And of course, the big picture of Jesus was up here, looking down on his children. And across the hall is Mom and Dad's room with a nice choice of red, plush carpet. Excellent. Their bed, it was a pretty old one too. It was, uh, oh yeah, I guess that ain't gonna open. It was right here, you know, against this wall. Okay, slightly different view. They had a dresser that was against that wall there. Uh, lots of trees. Uh, Granny's place is down the road, although I bet you can't see it. I can barely see it through the trees without looking through the camera. Uh, Jim and I had a little dirt area 
down there. Boy, that was pointless. Um, we used to play with dump trucks and all kinds of cool stuff down there. Fear not, I can edit all the sound out of this, I bet. With my Windows XP. Or Windows 2000, whatever. There she is. The upstairs tour is almost over. Let's go downstairs. 14 steps. I still remember that. I don't even have to count. I used to do pull-ups here on the railing when I used to be able to kind of grip it and then do pull-ups. I was strong at one time in my life. So this door has seen better days. Oh, <laughs> that's fun. Just stabbing walls. So this was the main living room. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Windows pulled out. I wonder if they were stolen or if they were actually just taken out and sold. Yeah, this room is just taking a serious beating because it's on the kind of facing the west side, sort of southwest, so it will get a lot of rain and weathering. Um, certainly smells bad, mostly due to the birds coming in and making a home. Used to have a big box TV over here in the corner. Christmas tree would go here, couch here, or sofa. Uh, when we had two of them, we had one here. Sometimes we just had a couple of chairs, depending on what year it was. There's a shelf filled with Wikipedia. We used to have uh, not the whole encyclopedia set, but about half because that's all we could afford. And a closet again, my dad custom built and designed all of this. So, so the stairs were here, but there used to be stairs here going down to the basement. In fact, the, the cement platform is still there for the base of those stairs. Uh, so my dad turned it into a closet, which was nice. This was the quote unquote nice living room that we weren't supposed to go into when we were kids. But of course I did. Um, when I was super young, the Christmas tree used to go there, but my mom didn't want people coming in here so often, so that kind of stopped until she did get a new tree and started actually letting people use the room. It's complicated. You know, mothers have the rules. You just have to kind of go with them, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, three windows in here, very spacious and bright. Sunrises in here were really nice. Never saw any during summer vacation. I always slept till like 11 o'clock. I don't know if that was the paint that I did or if that's the one that the new owners had done and my paint is underneath that. One thing I'll say for the record is I painted every single room and ceiling and baseboard in this house. I did do some work around here. Whoa. Okay, which one of you made that noise? Chinchilla. My name is Sugar. I love to cuddle. That's amazing. Where did that sound come from? I thought it was a dog. What did I kick? Wouldn't it have been funny if a chinchilla just ran out of there? Would have been the chinchilla's voice. Okay, it must have been this dog. Or something in there. That's amazing. The house comes to life. So that was exciting. So where was I? Right, I was bragging about my painting skills. Uh, no, you know, my mom was painting some stuff and I said, I can help you. And then I ended up doing all of it. I think she wanted all of the help. You know, I was just a stupid kid and she was working full time, so only fair. But I kind of sickly enjoyed it too. Uh, we're back in the kitchen. Um, this crack here was always appearing and being kind of fixed. 
by my dad. I think I did it once too. My brother did it once. But it was always appearing because, of course, an older house, the floors sag and so things will crack. Wow, the doorbell my dad put in, still there. This video is so scattered. I'm just all over the place. Probably reflects my state of mind being in my old home when it looks like this. It's just uh, shattered in a way, my memories, seeing my home like this. This room was done in 1971 or 81 or something like that. Um, fireplace was put in at that time, a chimney on the outside. And the couch was along there. And then we had chairs along the wall there or whatever, uh, by the, where you see the toilet and the other thing, uh, there were chairs. Yeah, it was a nice room. The carpet's really dated, but hey. The box there has a shower. Uh, the one dad had bought, he was gonna replace the downstairs one with and you know bathroom stuff he was going to use to redo it we'll go to the next room now this is a nice room it was redone in the oops in the uh, uh, late 80s and it actually still holds up pretty nicely I don't know about those curtains but I suppose they're kind of cool It's just crazy that it's so open to the world like this now. It's so trashed. Yeah. I don't know what to think about it. Don Cherry's Rock'em Sock'em Hockey 23. I mean, I could go through all of these little bits and trinkets of things and clothes and stuff and try and look for stuff. Oh, here we go. Yep. Every abandoned place has its Christmas decoration. Sure enough. Yeah, I could go through all this stuff, but it's just junk. It's so much junk. Clothes and beat-up furniture and DVDs and... Uh, it's just not really worth it. So this was a, a frame that was custom-made to house one of the custom-sized windows for an old house that required a lot of custom work. I don't have a price, but I remember my dad saying these were very, very expensive to get done. Thousands and thousands and thousands. Old houses are great until you have to work on them. And then standard sizes don't really apply so much. One thing of interest, I really don't know if it's going to be easy to pick up on the video here. Here she goes again. Where is that sound coming from? coming from? Where is your voice? <laughs> I swear it's when I stepped on something and the voice kicked in. Oh well, it's a mystery. <sighs> <sighs> An empty kitchen. This used to be the the hub of the of the Lockhart family. Boy these farmhouse kitchens kick ass. Yeah, the fridge was in that spot there. Um, that's where the phone is too. I've never known this place to look anything other than the way it is now, but there's photos of mom against this wall, I believe, with a wash tub and the countertop isn't there, <laughs> or the cupboards. It's unreal. Yeah, toaster used to be back there and whatever. That's where the stove was, as you can see by the big honking outlet. Garbage can, blah, blah, blah. And that's where I found Dad. I don't know if it can be seen, but there's a nice big crack in the ceiling. The kitchen looks pretty good still. It could probably use some upgrades and stuff, but it probably won't happen. Washer and dryer were back in there, as you can see from the hoses. Okay, here we go again. Not much to say, of course. The window's getting kind of shabby. 
They'll probably have to fix it if they want. Ooh, a toilet. Ooh. Uh, that's where the shower used to be, as you can see. It never got replaced. I came in a couple years ago and I painted this whole bathroom up for Dad and helped him put in the fixtures and things. And Well, he got so far and, you know, was going to get to it eventually, I guess. But Let's have a look at the basement. There are cobwebs everywhere. There's a closet door there. Oh yeah, spiders everywhere. Great smashed glass. A baby thing. Wow. Pipes are busted. Hmm, could be from freezing. Pipes disconnected. It's amazing the work my dad did down here. He uh, added wiring and electricity and a bathroom and they used to have an outhouse, he told me. I mean, this is way out in the country, way far away from Toronto. But here's your original 1896 door. So what do we got down here? An animal thing here? They had some sort of animal in here. Hopefully there's none still around. So, story time. The night I found my dad, I'd received a call from my uncle. And he had said, um, I've been trying to get a hold of your dad and I can't, can you just check and make sure he's okay? So that was an October night. And when I was in high school and I forget my key, I would come through this window. Um, I was able to slip the window out and, and come in this way. Uh, my dad tried to board it up at one point, but uh, he wasn't totally successful because I didn't have my key at the time. And I actually popped open that window, climbed down a big pile of wood here, and um, went up into the kitchen and found him laying there. He had had a stroke. Of course, I didn't know that at the time, but he went into the hospital and a couple days later, um, he unfortunately did not make it. So, so that window obviously has a lot of memories for me. Well, how about that? This is, my brother's gonna like this. I'm gonna chop my way through this Amazon of spider webs. They were actually pickling stuff. That's crazy. Huh. But even more interesting for my brother is the bench is still here. Get her done. This was my dad's workbench in a shed and they brought it down to do work down here because the plan was to have a bit of a workshop and it turned into an animal farm by the looks of it. How about that? Not really a tall place to work. I can almost stand up. My brother would have had to crouch the whole time. But my dad was 5'7 or something like that, so... Yeah. And one last story here. When my brother and I were little, as all Canadian kids do, uh, this was our hockey arena. At least the indoor house one. So we would shoot the puck back and forth down here and... Um, learn a little bit of stick handling, how to shoot the puck, at least baby sized. And eventually, yep, there you go, skates. Gotta have skates in the Canadian farmhouse. And eventually, we moved out to the barn, and my dad made a hockey rink out there. How Walter Gretzky of him. One more story before I forget. I wonder if it'll be visible without the diffuser on these lights. There was a spot where... Oh, there it is. Okay. So, 
Uh, that spot in the floor upstairs, I like guess ceiling down here, but floor upstairs, there used to be a cork stuck in that spot. And what had happened here, the story I was told, is there was a party going on and some people were in the basement and there were people uh, up in the kitchen there, partying and drinking and so forth. A guy was down here and accidentally shot a gun up through this floor. And, um, well, the story I'm told is he was literally just like inches away from hitting his wife. That is the, the hole there. And that's part of the story. And of course, before I left, I pulled the cork out. There's still a piece of it there, but I pulled the cork out and saved it. Where's that damn night vision thing? All right. We lose the color, but there it is. The cork. Someone shot down through the floor and almost hit somebody who was in the basement. It might be the other way around, but that's that's basically the story. Um, I'm running out of tape soon, so I'll uh, just leave it at that. But that's the cork, and I took a piece, uh, piece of it with me. I don't think anybody's going to miss that. Okay, and off with the night vision now. When my dad and my brother and a few other helpful individuals were building the addition onto the house on the other side of this door here, my dad had the insightful idea of turning this space into a bookshelf. This was originally a main door into the house. He'd be working outside, he'd come in this way so he wouldn't go through the kitchen, go down into the basement with his dirty boots or whatever. But he also ran a heating pipe up into there from here and uh, made, made a bookshelf out of it. So that's what this is. And it was just wood he had hanging around. So he decided to craft up a, a bit of a bookshelf there. So that was kind of a smart idea. This was all custom designed based around plans that were in my dad's head, uh, which confused a lot of people, but it obviously worked out well. Uh, this railing, of course, wasn't the original. Um, they replaced all the railings in here for some reason. I don't really know why. Actually, come to think of it, the original cabinets that, the last cabinets that were here, sorry, I think were this wood. So they made it to match the kitchen cabinets, this railing, the railing upstairs. Um, this one is gone. There used to be a railing here. This was actually just a storage spot for wood. And my dad turned it into a place that he originally wanted a TV to be. And he wanted a big television to go there. And at the time, televisions were about that size if they were, you know, the big new ones. Um, obviously a lot of wasted space now, but, um, you know, there you go. And of course, Christmas decorations everywhere. It's abandoned, so it's got to have Christmas decorations. My uncle and my dad were working on one section of this as they were finishing it up and uh, they were, oh, they were cutting out some frames or something like that. And my uncle said to my dad, why do you want another window? Why wouldn't you put a bookshelf there? And my dad was really keen on this idea of having essentially a lot of natural light and making it a very open space so he could see everything. At the time, there was a barn obstructing the view of the highway there, but that's gone now. Um, yeah. The one thing I really remember about this room is that mom was, uh, when she was sick in 95, in the summer, uh, she would sit out here and with the windows open because you could get a decent draft anyways. And she would uh, just try and, you know, live through it, I guess. I miss her a lot. I mean, the rust on everything, that doesn't happen in one year. No, that's, that's a multi-year rust cycle going on there. Same with all of the other dirt and decay. Like this absolutely has to have not been lived in for multiple years. And all of this junk is just, it has to have been sitting here for a long time. But the windows were just pulled out, so I don't know what the story is there. Maybe one last point. We'll have a look at the exterior. But there used to be a row of, of trees out here that would uh, protect the house from wind and weather and things, but those are long gone. And this one was actually still standing, but five months ago or so, but they chopped it down, cut it down, and, and now there's a big empty spot on the lawn up there. We'll have a look at that quickly. The shed here was a 
essentially my dad's main workshop. It was filled with his tools and other things like that. Um, there was a barn here, a big red barn. There was a row of trees here. The stump is still there, of course. But there were one, two, three trees. Two I used to climb, almost kind of tiny. I climbed this tree so much. It was my climbing tree. Let's have a look at the backside. So a lot of custom work by my dad and different people again. Um, you can see a window was longer here at one point and then it was filled in. Um, kitchen window, of course, there was custom work there. This chimney was put in when I was a kid when we added the fireplace. I remember some of this being remodeled, but a lot of it was remodeled multiple times by my parents. Yeah, the original kitchen chimney, which was never used in all of my time here. Um, I mentioned the bathroom. You can see where the brick was um, extended and used to fill in what was a window frame at one time. Um, there's a stump from one of the original trees. This little area back here was a playground for my brother and I. Let's do a shot from here. Bar bank, another nice shot of the shed. Trees. I feel like cleaning a chimney. We used to climb up on the, oops, sorry. We used to climb up on the house with a ladder and ropes and another ladder and drop the stuff down. Another view of the house. Bathroom window. There was a big mud spot there, and Jim and I used to, well, get pretty muddy when we were little kids, playing on our Tonka trucks and this big old tree. Big, big, big old tree. I called it the popcorn tree because of the white flowery things that would come off of it every spring. It was a beast. It's amazing to see it gone now. And here's your exterior view of this side of the house. I'm going to wrap up the tour there. Thanks for joining me on what is a very long tour of a place that most people probably don't find that interesting, but for me it obviously has great personal interest. So, um, this will probably be the last time I come here. I might drive by. The house may not even be here. Who knows? So, I'm going to make this my last goodbye. I think it's time to do so. Home. Pretty cool, huh?